may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the praise, O oh God, and we give you all the glory, Lord, and we worship you one more time, O oh God, because God, you're the only true and living God. There is no other God, there is no other power, there is no other authority, O oh God. You are the ultimate authority, God, and we just bow in your presence, oh God, and we just honor you, God, because we're so in awe of you, God, because such an awesome, powerful God who is in need of nothing or no one, but yet you consider us your children because of Jesus Christ. So, Father God, this day I bow, oh God, I bow in humility, I bow in adoration, oh God, knowing that I am just dust, oh God, a clay container, oh God. Wash me now, O oh God, and sanctify me, Lord Jesus, for your work. Father God, I pray even now, Lord, that your word that is about to go forth, O oh God, that every heart will be prepared to receive from you, O oh God, and that your word, Lord, will go forth with power and authority and without any hindrance, O oh God. Father God, that your name and your name only will be glorified and exalted and magnified, O oh God. We just give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Habakkuk 1, 2 to 4 says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore perverse judgment proceeds. And in Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3, the Lord replied to Habakkuk and he said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The spoken word this morning is to be still. God is working. Be still. God is working. And this morning, we read Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm going to touch on some of it because we're living in a time now where there's everything going on that will let you not want to be still. Everything is going crazy. When you turn on the news, you're seeing so many things. There is wars and rumors of wars. There is pestilences. There is doctrines that are of the devil. There is there is enough going on as in Habakkuk time when he saw the injustice and you're seeing that there is no good is saying good is evil and evil is good. That's the world we're living in now as in Habakkuk time. But God said that his people must be still because the vision is for an appointed time. God has an appointed time set where everything will come to an end. We read in Ecclesiastes 3 this morning and I love it because it says to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A, a time to plant and a time to reap. But I want to touch on 13 to 14 because the word says that I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that man should fear before him. That which 
which has already been and what is has and what has to be has already been. Because God is the Alpha and He's also the Omega. He begins all things and He ends all things. So as children of God, in a time when everything seems so crazy, we shouldn't fear. Our confidence must be in God. We need to be trusting and being anchored in God at this time. Because hear what the word said. Everything that we're going to go through has already been. Because God has already seen it. And if God already sees it, he's already made a way out. That is what faith is. Faith is believing in what you can't see. Faith is I know that everything is haywired. I know gas prices are going up. I know that all these crazy things are happening. And you, you might not want to continue to live and make plans. You want to you wanna do things because you, you're going to do and make plans according to how the world. People probably are selling their stocks and doing all these things because of what the world is showing. But as children of God who are trusting in God and have their confidence in God, we have to be still. We can't be like the world. We can't operate like the world because God tells us that the vision is for an appointed time. And he said, though it tarries, wait on it. We ought to wait on it because it will surely come. Everything is making you want to keep your money and not want to do anything. But we are the hands of feet of God. Amen. And we have to continue the work. We have to continue running the race. We have to continue to declare the work of God. Because Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are living in a time where we have to eat up the word of God. There is no time to saturate your mind with anything else. We are living in a time where we have to stand on the word of God. Because that is the only way we're going to be able to be still. Because when you turn on the news and you see everything, inflation is 7%. Gas prices are almost $5. The stock market is crashing. Everything is crazy. Everything. But God is telling us this morning to be still. I'm working. He's a God who works outside of time and before time. God knew that there would come a day where we'll be faced with all of this. But he has already made a way for us. But as children of God, we have to be confident in the word of God. And we have to be confident in our God. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word stands forever. We have to anchor on the word of God. He tells us we cannot live by bread alone. Now is not the time for us to try to live on earthly bread. We need the word of God. Because with everything that is going on, you will want to close up shop and not do anything. But if you are waiting on God, if your trust is in God, yes. if you're anchored in God, you're going to keep moving forward because you know that you're not by yourself because he tells us he will never leave us Amen. nor forsake us. Yes. You have to draw to the word of God. There is so much encouragement in the word of God in a time like this. There is so much that God has made for us because he knew mm -hmm. that we are going to come to this time. Mm -hmm. He knew that there was going to come a day when his people would be bewildered as Habakkuk was and they would look around them and all they see is destruction. All they see is chaos. And he knew Amen. that they would need some hope. He knew that they would need something to keep them going in a time like this. You see, this is what separates the church of Jesus Christ from the world. This is what keeps us is because we have a hope. He said in the word, let not your heart be troubled. Let not be afraid. This is what 
Jesus was telling us. He said he has overcome the world. Amen. Amen. These are the scriptures that you need to be meditating on. Every second of every day, you have to have the word of God. Scriptures, Hebrews 12, 2, it says Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have to saturate our minds and our bodies and our spirit with the word of God because there's so, there is enough to make you crazy. But the word of God, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us power, love, and a sound mind. And he has given us the authority to bring every thought that is not of him under captivity into the obedience of Christ. These are the last days. And the last days are treacherous. And we have to know what God says in his word. We have to know the word of God for ourselves. If we don't know it, we can be deceived. If we don't know it, we can be carried away. If we are not confident in the God that we serve and know him for ourselves, we are going to be running to and fro like the world. But this morning, God is saying, be still. I am God. God is in control. God will never leave his people. The word said he's the same God of yesterday. So if he's the God when there was a famine in the land and, and Isaac wanted to go to Egypt and God told him you can stay where you are and be okay and the word declares that in the same year he planted and reaped a hundredfold in a famine. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we serve. So you have to lift your faith to that place where you can experience that God. He is the God when Elijah was on the run from Jezebel that he ordered ravens to feed him. That is the God that we serve. We serve a God that is not limited to our circumstances, but he can make a way when we're facing impossible circumstances. That is the God that we serve. And I'm going to touch on the word this morning because we're going to see that God is the same. We heard this morning, we read in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles 20 with King Jehoshaphat. And what I love, this is one of my favorite scriptures because it shows you the power of God. And it shows you that God don't need no man to fight any battle for him. It shows you that God is omnipotent. He is the most powerful of all authority on earth and in heaven. And the word of God said that the Ammonites and the Moabites and Mount Seir rose up against Judah, God's people. They decided that they're going to come to destroy them. And I'm telling you, day by day, there are many versions of the Ammonites and the Moabites and the people of Mount Seir. That the devil raises up every day to come after God's people. You might not be aware of it, but day by day we are ensued in a battle because the enemy wants to destroy God's people. It is a fact. And the word of God said Judah was there minding their own business because God has given them rest from their enemies. And here come their enemy coming in multitudes to destroy Judah. And the word of God said Jehoshaphat feared when he saw them and he went and declared a fast and sought God. You see this man knew, he understood that yes these people are coming against me but I serve the God who created them. And the word of God said he sought God. And he said, aren't you the God who delivered my ancestors out of the hand of Egypt? Aren't you the God who destroyed kings and destroyed kingdoms and, and gave us this land? Aren't you that God? And now here they are coming to destroy us. You see, sometimes we feel when situations come upon us that we're by ourselves. Sometimes 
we feel like we're backed up against a wall. And that's what the enemy does when he surrounds you. My God, he surrounds you and you feel like you can't breathe. You feel like you're going to be destroyed. But I'm here to tell you that those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that cannot be removed but abides forever. You, I cannot stress in enough saints. We have to believe you got to believe the word of God more than you believe that you're going to be able to inhale and exhale. You have to believe God's word more than now you can go. <sighs> because if you don't anchor in the word of God, I'm telling you the arsenals that the enemy is using in this time, we will not be able to stand. You got to know God's word for yourself and stand on the word of God because he cannot resist God's word. Amen. You declare as thus saith the Lord as his word declares, he has to listen to the word of God. He has to bow. He has to bow because God's word is authority. And when you speak it, it's as if it's God is speaking. So the devil has to come under obedience when you speak the word of God. So the word of God says that a prophet came and told him that God said, listen, you don't need to worry about this. And I want us to pay attention to that because it is the same now. God said, don't worry about the multitudes that are coming against you. The word described them as they were numerous as the sand of the seashore. And here's a prophet telling you, even though a trillion billion people coming to kill you, and you can see these people, God is saying, don't worry, stand still and see the sun. That is a tall order, if you're gonna be real. That's not pretty enough. No, I could do that. No. You see people coming with tanks and guns and soldiers and they're coming to destroy you. And God is saying, the battle is mine. You see, that's what it is. When you're a child of God, every parent in here knows that you do anything to take care of your child. Even if they're 50, 60, 70, you are parent forever. We are children of God, bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. So God will defend us forever. He said, if I am for you, who can be against you? That is what the word of God said. So when the devil raises up people and situations against you, you declare the word and say, God says in his word that if he is for me, nothing can be against me. So you have to be removed. You have, this is a time where you have to declare the word of God in your life. Amen. I'm telling you, this is a time where you cannot know the word. This is a time where you have to have a scripture ready for every situation that's going to come to you. Because if you don't have that, the devil is going to take you down. And that is what he wants to do. He wants to instill faith and doubt because if you're fearful and you doubt you are powerless yes, right. yeah. but if you stand in confidence in your God if you stand with boldness in your God and when he comes like a lion that devil in hell to tear you up you can tell him that no weapons that are formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that comes against me God has given me the power and authority to condemn it you have to start telling him that you know who you are in Christ Jesus that's what happened with Jehoshaphat he said no this doesn't make any sense we are the tribe of Judah we are children of God why should we run scared when the enemy is coming after us they should be the ones scampering and he saw the king of kings and lord of lords we need to change the narrative. Enough is enough. We're always all this stuff. No, speak God's word. Amen. Declare God. God's word is law. God's word is authority. God's word is power. Resist the devil with the word of God. Amen. Because his number one thing right now is to steal our peace. Yeah. It's to steal our joy. Yeah. Because it's the people who are sanctified and anchored in God. He can't tell us foolish 
foolishness and give us confusing doctrine and nonsense. He knows that we know better than that. But what he does is he sends us things to steal our joy and to rob us of our peace. Yeah. My God, to get us in vexation of spirit, to take our joy. But God is saying to be still. Amen. Be still. Amen. God has it. Be still. You don't have to wonder how it's going to work and how you're going to do. Children of God are not like the world. Our Father have us in the palm of his hands. And we have to have that confidence to know that our God, whatever he says he's going to do, he will do it. He says in his word that his thoughts are not like ours. That's why I love when Brother Moise touched on it today. When people like to say, if there is a God in the world, why would all of this? That's nonsense because his thoughts are not like ours. And his ways are not like our ways. And that's what I love about God. You see, God is not like man. You do you something to man, they're ready to tear you up and to sue you and to carry you to court and to destroy you. But we serve a God. That he already spoke everything. He's already ordained everything. And everything has a set time. So everybody can chat them chat. Because there's going to come a day. When every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. So they can wonder why all of this is happening. God said write the vision. Write it. Write the vision. Because there is a day. When every knee will bow. Yeah. There is a day when everybody have their doctrines. The doctrines of devils. And yeah. this is this and that is that. And all the confusion. Yeah. There is a day. And that's what makes God God. That is what makes God God. His patience. And his long suffering. And his tender mercy. And his care. Because in everything, God is in control. God is working. God is working. He told Jehoshaphat, don't worry, you won't have to fight. Now think about how crazy that song. An army is coming against you with weapons of mass destruction. And God is telling you, it's okay. Just, just relax. It's going to be okay. And the word of God said, these men and women of Judah, started to worship God. They started to praise God into battle. Don't you think about it in the natural now. Let's let's look at it in the natural. Our army is coming up against us and we have our tambourines and we, people would think we're crazy. But that is faith in God. In the world it's going to look like you're out of your mind. When everybody is consumed by worry and fear and you're smiling and you are praising and you're singing you confuse the devil and that's what we ought to do these people were singing into battle they were praising into battle they were worshiping as they were going into battle and the word of god says that god set an ambush in the camp of the enemy my god you have to understand the god that we serve God said an ambush. You see, that is the God we serve. God is all powerful. God don't need anybody to tell him how he needs to defend, how he needs to deliver, because he already has it done. It is done already. It is for children of God to be still. In this time, it is hard to be still, if we're going to be honest. But you got to look into the word of God and see all his promises and see how he defended his people in times past. When Jehoshaphat went to the battle, the battle was done. Because what did God say? The battle is mine. God let the enemies turn against themselves. How can you not rejoice when you see God move like that? And he's the same God. He's, he's not the God of yesterday. It's the same God who's seated in the high heavens. And he is here to defend his people. So it is for us to believe that. We have to believe the word of God. We have to live the word of God. Let people think you're out of your
your mind. Yeah. Let them think that you're a fanatic that every time you, they come with something you have a word to tell them. Listen, the word of God says this. Because the enemy is doing everything to try to steal your peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world give. He's trying everything to rob our joy. Because if you are in torment, you can't pray. If you're worried, you can't pray. If you're fearful, you cannot pray effective, fervent prayers. So it is time for children of God to anchor in the word of God. These are the end times. Everything that is happening, Jesus told us it would be so. But he said we shouldn't fear. We should look up. Because our redemption draws nigh. We have to continue to seek God with everything. We need to seek him more now. More. We don't have time to play games. Because our adversary isn't playing games. He's not. He is doing things in the spiritual realm that we can't even see. You know, so we have to stay anchored in God. The battle is real and it's a battle for the mind. If he could steal your mind, you are a goner. That's why we have to saturate our mind with the word of God. With the word of God. Start, look, look at your day. Look at what you consume your day with. And replace some of that nonsense with the word. Because we need that is our weapon. That is our lifeline. We don't have any other weapon. Our weapon of warfare is the word of God. And if we can feed our spirit with the word. No matter what the enemy brings. We have a word for him. It is true. No matter what he brings, you have the word because you're believing what God's word says. Your confidence is in the word of God because you have proved that God is the true and living God. Deuteronomy 33, 26 to 27 says, I love this word. It says, there is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides the heavens to help you. And in his excellency on the clouds, it says the eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say destroy. My God. Listen. Saints of God, we serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is all powerful and we have the authority to declare things when the enemy comes at us. We can say the word. We serve the God of Jeshurun. God will destroy you for me. Because he said, if I am for you, nothing and no one can be against you. You see, this is the time we're living in. It's the season. You can't tell every other person we talk to is suffering. You, you, you get on the phone and so many people are hurting. There is, there is enough going on to just keep you in a place of sadness. But as children of God, we don't need, we don't have time to be sad. Because we serve a mighty God. We don't have time to feel sorry for ourselves because Jesus Christ has already given us the victory. We got to rise in that place, saints. Because we are living in serious times. And I can see, I can see that the enemy is trying to steal peace. He don't care about it because he can't tell us nothing else. Can't tell you. When he understands that you know who you are, he's not going to use the same old tricks. Because he knows you're going to see that. He is flipping it now. And he's heightening it. It's to, it's to, he wants to get you to a place where you're just angry yeah. all the time. And you can't serve God when you're angry yeah. all the time. So you got to see him and rebuke him and say, I see you devil in hell, but you don't have the authority. Because God has given me his peace. It is serious, saints. Don't think he's coming with no big things. The subtle little things. People cut you off on the road. People stop in front of you. Do all kind of stuff. It is to get you to a place of upset. And the thing that's dangerous 
just about it that in that moment when you get angry, Jesus can make his appeal. Listen, you have to be alert because the word of God says he comes as a thief in the night and it says at the twinkling of an eye. So in that twinkle when you get angry when that person cut you off, Jesus can sound the trumpet and I'm here because I'm in a spirit of anger. The devil is a liar. It is serious. I know it sounds simple, but it's not. It is not simple. These are the things that the enemy is doing. This is why God is saying, we got to be still. We got to be still. We got to say, God, I see the things that are happening and I'm asking you to take control of it, Jesus. Help me. Help me, Lord. Because that is the ultimate. We are here to make it to heaven. That's it. We got to work because we have to eat. We got to drive. We got to we got to we got to exist. But ultimately, we're trying to make it to heaven. That is our number one priority. And the enemy's number one priority is to prevent us from going to heaven. So this is why we have to be on high alert. This is why we can't just take, there is nothing that's just happening just because. Not for a child of God. Everything is a way that the devil is trying to get you to a place where you're powerless. Let's not give him that power and authority. Jesus Christ said, I give you power to step on scorpion and serpent and all power of the enemy. He said, nothing by any means shall hurt you. That's the authority that God has given us. So we are victorious. He said, the word said, I have been young and I don't know I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Children of God, we don't have to worry if the prices want to go through the roof. God will provide. Ask brother Isaac. Isaac was ready to run to Egypt and God said, you don't have to run. I'm encouraging your saints that it looks crazy. Everything going up. These taxes going up. And you're thinking, how? Oh, I remember one, one time when $100 could buy so much in the grocery store. Things are going through the roof. But God says that he is with us. Amen. He says that he will provide for us Amen. because he is father for us. His word says all things work together for the good. So yes, the prices are rising, but somehow it is going to work for our good. That is the frame of mind that we have to be in. It's a frame of mind that will make you seem crazy to people who don't know God. It's a frame of mind because you're believing God for things that seems impossible. But the word of God said that all things are possible. He says all things. He didn't say some things. He says all things are possible. He said that if you abide in me and my word abide in you, he said whatever you ask of me, I will grant you the desires of your heart. Saints, so you got to know the word. You got to pray the word. When you're talking to God, you say, God, everything looks crazy, but this is what your word says. This is the season that we're living in, saints of God. We're living in a season that is not ordinary. We're living in a time that we have to know the word for ourselves. Amen. Know what God says in his word. Have the word because it is a crazy season. Crazy. But we serve a God who nothing surprises him. He's a God that doesn't sleep. That's what Psalm 121 says. He's a God who's in total control. He has never lost control. He knows what's going on. And what should give us peace and comfort is that one day this old system is going to be passed away. That one day every tear that you cry 
Jesus is going to wipe it away. That one day, the body that was susceptible to sickness and pain is going to be taken away because God is going to give us an indestructible body that one day we'll be able to see God in all his glory. We have this hope. It's enough for us to be still because we know that this too shall pass. My God, this too shall pass. This season will not stay. This season will pass. But it's how we're going to operate while we're going through this season will determine the journey. Are we going to believe in the word of God? Are we going to stand firm in his promises? Are we going to look to him and him only? Or are we going to try to figure it out? I'm not trying to figure out anything because I know nothing. God is the author and the finisher of everything. And this is why he says in Isaiah 40, and I love this. He says, have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood it from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circles of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Listen to this. He says he brings the princes to nothing. So all these people who are propping up their selves God says he brings their nothing. He says he makes the judges of the earth useless. My God. He says scarcely shall they be planted and scarcely shall they be sown. Scarcely shall they stack root in the earth when he will also blow on them and they will wither. My God. You see people don't understand this mighty God. That's why when you hear nonsense, you don't have to say anything. God is not looking for us to defend him. Because God can defend himself. He said, if I blow on you, My Lord. you will be no more. That is the powerful God that people trifle with. So it's not for us to get into any arguments. There will come a day when they will see the God who will blow and you will wither. The word of God says, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary and his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but those who wait my god on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Saints of God, it is the word of God. He said if you wait on him, all you got to do is wait. Waiting is not easy. Anyone who says waiting is easy, they lie. Because while you're waiting on God, you're bringing yourself, your, your desires, everything under, to, under subjection. You're bringing every desire you want to hasten what you're waiting on God for. We have to wait on God. We have to be still and we have to wait. If we can do that, we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. All we have to do is wait. Wait on God. Don't get carried away with the things that's going on in the world. Know what God says in his word. Amen. Hold on to what God says in his word. Know him for yourself. Mm -hmm. The word of God says that if he doesn't hasten the day, he said, down to the very elect of God will be deceived. 
if God is saying that, that means that there are things that are going to happen in the world that would cause down to the very elect. And when you think about the elect of God, we're not talking about people who play church. We're talking about people who are sanctified, people who are blood washed, people who know God. And God said, for their sake, I got to hasten these days. My God, the elect. So we have to we have to understand the time we're living in. Nobody is exempt. So God is telling us what we need to survive. He is putting it in his word and it is for us to work to, to, to look into the word and see what he's saying. In the same Matthew 24, Jesus said that if they don't show up the day, no flesh. In one, in one part he said, if you don't shorten the days, no flesh will be saved. And then he said, he has to shorten it for the sake of the elect. So that shows you that we're living in dangerous times. We are living in dangerous times. And it is for us to know the word. Seek God with everything that is within you. Know the God that you serve. Serve him with your whole heart. This is not time to play games. This is not time to be on the fence. This is not time to dispute doctrine. That's nonsense because doctrine ain't going to help you. This is the time to know that God is God and that's it. And that there is only one door and that's Jesus Christ. There ain't no other door. There ain't no other way. Jesus said anybody who's trying to come in any other way is a thief and a robber. I am the door. So that is it. It is simple. People complicate the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ. He went to Calvary's cross to die for the sins of humanity. And whosoever believes in him. That's what the word of God said. Should not perish. But have everlasting life so we give God the praise and the glory and we thank him that we're not by ourselves we thank him that he said I'm going to the father but I won't leave you orphans I'm going to leave you my Holy Spirit we thank God for his Holy Spirit the restrainer of full evil because people think they see anything now it's the, it's the spirit of God that is restraining evil that is why we should not because God's Holy Spirit is still with us. And if God is with us, it will be well. It will be well. It is well with our soul. So saints of God, I'm going to use Psalm 46 to close this message. My encouragement to you is to just seek God. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him like how you breathe. Seek him with your everything. Know God's word. No, saturate your mind. When people talking nonsense with you, speak the word. They gonna think you're a lunatic, but I'm all, listen, I'm fine if people think me crazy for Jesus. Listen, it's a good thing to be out of your mind for Jesus. I'd rather be out of my mind for Jesus than anything else. I will be crazy for Jesus. I am good with that. That's a mad woman. Yes, I am out of my mind for Jesus. I will do that. Get to a place when people come to you with things. when they Because they don't know God. And they will come to you and start feeding little things in your... Just so you know, I get what you're saying. But here's what my, my father tells me. His word... Start speaking the word more in your conversations. Because you see, when you do that, the devil will shut up. Because he used people and situations to come at you, to engage you in things that don't profit. But just shut it down with the word of God. The word of God says that if we submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee. Resist him with the word of God. Amen? And in closing, I'm going to use Psalm 46 because it is fitting in this time when we're seeing wars and rumors of wars, when we're seeing nations raising against nations. But I'm here to encourage everyone that God is working. Be still because God is working. No sin goes unpunished. Every deed 
done on the earth, whether it is in the open or in the dark, everyone will have to go before the judgment seat of God. We all will have to stand before God and give him an account of what we did on this earth. So be at peace knowing that we serve the only true and righteous judge. We serve the only true and righteous judge. And Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, as children of God, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Saboa, the Lord of hosts, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Father God, we praise you, O holy and matchless God. God of Jeshurun, we worship you. Oh, El Shaddai, we magnify you. Jehovah to Sukkani, we bow before you. Rohi, Rafa, God, the great I am. We worship you this day and we thank you, God, that we are not by ourselves. This is the reason why we can rejoice and we can have hope because you are with us. You will never leave us or forsake us. You're the God who goes before us. We thank you, Jesus, that you're seated at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit that is with us even now in this time, restraining evil in this earth. Father God, if we did not have you, we would have nothing. But we rejoice today because we have you as Father, we have you as God, we have you as King, we have you as for everything, Lord. And I pray, oh God, that as your word goes forth, that every ear and every heart that receives your word, oh God, will be resoluted to get to know you, the true and living God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who sits on the circles of the earth and every inhabitant of earth is like a little grasshopper. Father God, we worship you. Father God, we glorify you and we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done. Continue to be the one to lead us, lead us and guide us. My God, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter, but Lord, your word said that we are more than conquerors, Lord. Father God, we cannot do this without you, so just continue to watch over us. Abide with us in these times. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the one who makes all this possible. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.